Transmission Control, this is Conestoga Transmission Check on frequency 659 or 6. We read you loud and clear, Conestoga. Beautiful liftoff, Conestoga. Look in your rearview mirror and say goodbye to Mars. Roger, Mission Control. Looks like smooth sailing from here on in. since the space mission under the command of Captain Neil Braddock lifted off the surface of Mars to begin the journey back to Earth. Nine long weeks in which inexplicably there has been no contact with mission control from the nine international scientists and astronauts who undertook this unprecedented and dangerous journey a scant five months ago. This lack of communication from those aboard remains a mystery and Dr. Andrew McAllister, the director of the mission here in the United States, provides no answers and seems to have no idea as to what has happened. He must truly be the first person in history to have lost a spaceship. As of last night, however, observers at Palomar have isolated a moving object which may or may not be the space lab. If it is, then Conestoga would only be three days away from Earth and possibly re-entry if, and these are big ifs, if the object is indeed the Conestoga, if the craft has not been disabled in some way, and if their two-week encampment upon Martian soil has not led to some physical or mental debility that would preclude the space traveler's safe return to Earth. Whether or not this is the spaceship, the mission is clearly in jeopardy. This is Ted Johns, News 107. And now, back to our scheduled music program. Repeat, we have fired. We copy. 
Control, I have computer confirmation on lateral latitude, Alpha George 5511. Confirming five. Sir, dead on. Pays to be lucky. Interesting, Colonel. Excuse me, Captain. I was waiting to speak with you privately. While going through my personal papers? Captain, I am a plain man, so I will speak plainly. Neither Olga Denerenka nor I have any intention of validating your leadership of this mission. It's your privilege. More than my privilege, Captain. It's my duty. I believe, and I will say so publicly, that your judgment has been questionable on far too many occasions. Your most critical error is one that we may not survive. Really? You unnecessarily wasted fuel on the Delta 216 during liftoff from the Martian surface. I'm seriously concerned that we may not have enough fuel for our re-entry. We've been over this. Not to my satisfaction. I tell you frankly, Captain, if I could have mustered the support, I would have assumed command of this mission many weeks ago. You do as your government tells you. That's the way you operate. You don't do anything on your own. Don't misjudge me, Captain. And don't misjudge me. As long as we're aboard this ship, I'm judge, jury, and executioner. I'll consider any attempt to subvert this mission an act of mutiny. Do I make myself clear? Get out of here. Who's been advised? The president, the secretary, and Rostov, of course. Go ahead. We'll be all over town by okay, breakfast, and we haven't had a chance to debrief. Can't be helped. Well, the hell with it. Still alive. Mission control. We read you loud and clear, but we are not receiving any visual transmission. Possible miscalibration of laser transmission. Uh, can I confirm that, Constable? Kind of Did you uh, recalculate? Neil. Andy, you're up early. What the hell happened up there? We got swamped by a meteor shower two days after Mars liftoff. Wiped out of communications, and we're slightly off trajectory. It's nothing we can have. I'm a goddamn casual about it. Well, you know, the Andy Grace under pressure. Is everybody okay? Just fine. Major Steiner and Pam Cooper on EDA boosting up our reception. Now, what about your fuel? Why don't you ask our navigator? David? Morning, Doctor. It, uh, it is morning down there, isn't it? It sure is, and it's good to see you. Now, our computers tell us your fuel situation could be better. Tell your computers we're okay. They'll be glad to hear that. What wonderful news, Doctor. Communication is last. You ought to be congratulated. I'm afraid I had nothing to do with that. Well, there's nothing wrong with the ship. No, we're we'll running tests now, apparently not. They're all well. Yep. It will make my government very happy. Particularly Commissar Derenenko, who, as you know, was justifiably worried about his wife's safety. I would like to uh, speak with Colonel Altsinov. In time. Oh, for nine weeks, my people have been worried about their countrymen. Surely you can spare me a few moments. Captain Braddock. I'll get him, sir. Captain Braddock, I'm relieved that you are safe and well. Thank you, sir. Neil, in case you haven't already been briefed, several weeks ago, Russian Premier Savarnich was deposed and his successor named Olga's husband to serve on the Politburo. Yes, we've been briefed, and Mrs. Denerenko to notify her. Colonel, say may pachti... Mr. Rostov, English. You know the rules. Oh, forgive me. Colonel Rostov, it's good to hear your voice. I trust you are well. Yes, I'm fine, as is Olga Denerenka. She is delighted by the news of her husband's appointment. And the mission, is it satisfactory? What I have to say should wait until my return to Earth. At that time, I will provide you with a detailed report on our uh, activities. I see. Well, I look forward to it with great interest. Our friendly KGB bastard is playing his usual games. You mean unlike our friendly CIA bastard? What are you trying to do, blow my cover? Christ, it's Kilbright. Now, you tighten security. Great news about Conestoga, Andy. What was the problem? It was technical. You'll be filled in. Dinah, would you put me through to the president, please? Yes, sir. Uh, look, Andy, we got to get some coverage out to the country. How about setting up an interview right away with a feed to the networks? Can't do that. Maybe tomorrow. Look, if we wait, 
people to start asking questions. Only if you put the idea in their mind. Now look, Kilbride. I still got scientists up there. And right now it's all they can do to hold this mission together. Now I said tomorrow. And that's maybe tomorrow. Good morning, Mr. Vice President. Wonderful news, Andy. We're told everyone's just fine. Yes, sir. Well, I know how hard you work putting this mission together. The Chief and I are delighted the crisis is over. We may still have a problem. Oh? Yeah, there's something going on up there now. I may be paranoid, and I may just be reading between the lines, but it seems to me maybe the Russians are trying to throw a curve or two at us. Specifics? Nothing yet, sir. Maybe just negative propaganda. I guess we'll have to handle it if it comes up. Oh, and my other problem, sir, the media. It seems they want access to the space lab, some sort of network coverage. Well, indulge them, Andy. Let them have their broadcast. Meanwhile, I'll be flying up this afternoon. It is an election year, and the chief wants us to hog a little of your glory. You understand? I do, sir, and you hog all you like. You're entitled. Oh, and as for the Russians, Screw him. Did I say that? Bye, Andy. You found something? Take a look. Don't see anything. What is it? Looks to me like good old Canadian dirt. Kind of fun in my own backyard. We travel 150 million miles to the Trivium Carantis, and what do we find? A rock garden. Old damn mission's been a waste of time. Oh? I mean, uh, professionally. Personally, it's been interesting. Problem? No. It's just that we land in a few days. It will be a matter of an adjustment. You do have a wife. Dominica... Uh, no, it's all right. We both know what we were doing, and nothing is ever permanent, is it? I suppose not. One thing, though. Yes? Like you said, we still have a few days. Excuse me, was I interrupting something? If we said yes, would you leave? I simply wanted both of you to learn that we have successfully corrected course. We've heard. So, the mission is almost over. Sad in a way. Now that we are almost home, I will no longer have you to look at each morning. I doubt that will be a significant tragedy in your life, Major. It will be tragic for some. Partings can be difficult. Well, I shall leave you to your work. Huh? How can you two spend so much time in here? So many dangerous chemicals, most depressing. You finished. Patience, my friend. Another few days and you and I will be happily rid of one another. Ciao. Ciao. Then, Dr. Verdu, everyone aboard seems to be in good health. Oh, yes. Except for what you Americans call the cabin fever. Crowded together for five months. It is a situation in which relationships can be sorely tested. And have they been? I was uh, merely using a figure of speech. We've been all getting along quite well. Why don't you go home and get some sleep? What, ruin my health? My body wouldn't be able to stand it. One more medical question, Doctor. Before the mission began, there was the fear that all of you might be in danger of contacting some sort of space disease. I wouldn't concern myself with Martian plague. In any event, we will be undergoing extensive physical examinations in quarantine before mingling among you. How's Jill, by the way? Shouldn't you be a grandfather by now? She's like this mission, Mitch. Overdue. Mr. Kilbride. One amongst us has been negligent. I'm embarrassed to tell you it's me. The food here is remarkably good and got a problem. French, what? I'm very much a Braddock wants to talk to you on the offline scrambler frequency. What the hell is this? That system's only to be used in case of emergency. Or when Braddock's got something to say, he doesn't want the world to hear. Neil? 
Andy, you're coming in loud and clear. What's the problem? The Russians. We may have a PR disaster on our hands. I think that Olga Denarenko and Colonel Kalsanov are going to denounce the mission. What do you mean, denounce, Neil? He's got some sort of laundry list, charges that say I screwed up. He's fixated on the shortfall of fuel for re-entry. Claims I used more than I needed on the Mars liftoff. Well, did you? Is there any truth to it? Some. Look, Andy, nobody calls him right all the time. I've made mistakes, but I've done a good job up here. Who's on your side? Six to two split. Us against the Russians. Who's not voting? Kurt Steiner. He despises us all equally. He's right in the middle. You better keep us posted. Check. Talk to you soon. Uh... Come in. Do I shock you? Somewhat. Really? And I thought you had such a good memory. I'll come back some other time. Neil, if my body now offends you, I'll cover it. Is that better? I was hoping we could talk. Of course you were. You've spoken with Kalsinov, and now you want me to speak to him. Or am I mistaken? Look, if he goes public with these complaints, he'll blow the image of the entire mission. People want heroes. Let's give them a success story, even if it is an illusion. We can generate enough fun. Oh, stop it! You never had much of a sense of irony, Neil. But it should occur, even to you that you are the last person I would help. Particularly since you ignored me when I needed you. Damn it, Olga, you're married. A fact that doesn't seem to have discouraged the others. That is, until my husband was elevated to the Politburo. <sighs> you're all so afraid. Regardless of what you may think of me, this mission is more It's important. not this mission that concerns you. It's your career. That's all that's ever been important to you in your life, even in the beginning. Now, if you'll please leave me alone, I'd like to remove this robe. And I'm sure it will embarrass you. say you called me at 5.30 in the morning to tell me nothing happened. Well, I needed somebody to talk to. I see, Grace. Are you upset? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little mad. How are you? Well, I'm a little tired. Well, how are you? So I'm tired. Now, look, you tell Jill if she keeps this up, you're coming home, and she'll have to have that baby all by herself. You understand me? Grace? Hello, Grace? Hello? Under a priority one condition. Go ahead, please. Sorry to cut in, Doctor. We got a Class A emergency down here. Well, what the hell's so important? They couldn't wait a minute. Can't discuss it on the phone. We need you down here five minutes ago. Doctor Callister, can you tell us what's happening? Oh, you know as much about it as I do. We had an interview, a two-way interview with Spaceflight scheduled for 8 a.m. Suddenly they pulled the plug, no reason given. Now the building's off limits. Andy! What the hell happened? We lose them again? No, we still got them. Most of them. What? Olga Denarenko's dead. What are you talking about, dead? Dead how? Of what dead? For Christ's sake, people her age don't just die. I know. Oh, for Christ's sake. Braddock and Dr. Berdu are standing by to talk. Also, I called our medical officer. She's waiting for you. Dr. Good morning, Hallister. Margaret. Sit down, please. Neil? What the hell's going on up there? We're as confused as you are, Andy, but Olga is dead. Dominica Mistrelli found her in a cabin about two hours ago. Dr. Badu thinks she's been dead. How long? 
possibly an hour or so before our body was discovered, no more. I can tell you how or why, Dr. McAllister. It could have been anything. Stroke, heart attack, blood clot, aneurysm. We won't know until we can perform an autopsy. Wait a minute. You're asking us to bring her back down to Earth without knowing the cause of death? I understand, but we have no choice. Perhaps we do. What'd you say? I said perhaps we do have a choice. Can you see me? It's Dr. Margaret Lee. Yes, doctor. Would it be possible to put Mrs. Denarenko's body in the pod you use for physical examinations and hook her up to the sensors and x-ray scanner here at ground control? It's possible. I don't know what you'd get. A complete skeletal x-ray, chemical analysis of the blood, urine and other body fluids. May I remind you, doctor, this system was developed for use on living organisms. I didn't say it would be perfect, but it might give us something. Well, I suppose it's worth a try. An autopsy a half million miles into space. A novel approach, Dr. Lee. We'll get back to you later, Andy. Right. The procedure is degrading. Perhaps. But mission control won't clear us to land until they've isolated the cause of Olga's death. And if they cannot do so? Let's not even consider that a possibility. I'll let you know when we have something definitive. I don't think I'll be much help. Of course you will. No. You were right about one thing, though. I would have made a terrible doctor. Did I tell you that? University of Paris, lecture hall B. I believe your quote was, Miss Cooper, you are a brilliant student, embarking on a career for which you are emotionally unsuited. I don't recall. Your memory is remarkable. It's not an easy thing to forget. When you're 22 and curtly dismissed by a teacher for whom you have a great deal of... Uh, affection. This isn't a very suitable conversation. I mean, under the circumstances. No. Well, then, shall we get to it? I hope I remember enough of my pre-medical education to be of some help. I'm sure you will. Would you like me to try? Oh, yes, please. My fingers are a little arthritic. She's hopped up. Let's see what we've got. No, God damn it! I said no pictures and no interview. If we have a statement to make, when we have a statement to make, we'll make it. Andy, we're springing a few weeks here. Speculation in Paris. Uh, the French president's called the White House looking for confirmation. What is it, Dinah? Excuse me, but Senator Carlyle's on line one, and Alexander Rostov's waiting to see you. Well, stall the senator and send in Mr. Rostov. Andrew, my friend, why was I not informed of Valga Denarenka's death? Where'd you hear that? Well, perhaps I've been misled. No, Alex, I wish you had. And the cause of death? Right now, it's indeterminate. Andrew, forgive me, but I have also learned that you are conducting what an, an autopsy through space. Now, really, can such a thing have merit? We hope so. I mean, if there is some strange virus from outer space aboard that spacecraft, and I hope to God there isn't, well, maybe we can identify it. Well, of course, of course. Personally, I find the notion of such an examination distasteful. Officially, I must register my protest, but since you are going ahead, I trust you will give me a full and complete report of your findings. Of course. Yes, Dinah? Dr. Lee is here, sir. Ask her to wait a minute, will you please? Surely not on my account. Uh, if Dr. Lee has the results, we are all vitally interested to learn what they are. 
Dinah, ask her to come in, please. Dr. Lee, you know Mr. Rostov, Soviet liaison officer? Yes, we've met. I'm charmed, as always, and most anxious to learn the results of your post-mortem tests. I'm sorry they were inconclusive. There's every indication Ogodenarenko died of a massive brain hemorrhage, but we won't be able to confirm those results until the bodies return to Earth. And no hint of any strange intergalactic viruses. Well, then at least the mission is not in jeopardy. I'm looking forward to a complete report of your findings. At the moment, Commissar Denarenko knows nothing of this tragedy. He and his young wife were, they were very much in love. Yes? Sir, it's Harry Devlin, the Vice President's Chief Assistant on the line. Hello, Harry. What can I do for you? Okay, Doctor, you can forget what I said in front of Rostov. What? Here's what really killed Ogodenarenko. I don't want to read this. Can you tell me in three sentences or less? One, there was a heavy concentration of barbiturates in her system. Not enough to kill her, but certainly enough to put her to sleep. Jesus Christ. Two, the most probable cause of death is asphyxiation. Three... Wait a minute. You're trying to tell me she was murdered? It's highly probable. Jesus Christ. I'm afraid, sir, that is not the worst of it. What? Pregnant? The woman was pregnant? Yes, sir. Two months into term. You sure about this young lady? Yes, sir. Well, it's a mess, isn't it? Five months in space, two months pregnant. You don't know for sure how she died? Someone either strangled or smothered her. Sir, right now our immediate problem is we can't keep her death secret forever. Well, what do you suggest? Announce it. Cause is unknown. No matter what we say, the news people are going to go crazy, but maybe we can reduce speculation. All right. But nothing about the pregnancy. Not until I confer with the president. Right, sir. Ah. As soon as we have a murderer aboard the space land. Forgetting everything else, the political ramifications are appalling. Andy, I'm damned if I have any advice, but handle it. This is Georgi Denerenko. Oh, Piotr. Piotr, my friend, what is this urgent news that drags me away from my guests? Piotr, there must be some mistake. Santa Rostov in Haiti. Mission Control has evaluated the test results. They've asked for a visual scan of the body. That's it. Look up into the light. No. You needn't look. I'll tell you what's wrong. It's a subcutaneous growth. Possibly a tumor. Can't be a tumor. They'd have never let you come on this mission. I suspected it only a few weeks before we launched. I was able to falsify my final x-rays. 
It's probably benign. In any case, I'm certain it's operable and it it will be attended to as soon as we return to Earth. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have an examination to perform and I will be most obliged for your help. Is there anything specific they want us to look for? Evidence of strangulation. Mrs. Tremaine, have you been informed of the death of Olga Denarenko? Yes, I heard it on the news. Excuse me, Mrs. Tremaine, do you feel that your husband David is in any person? No, why should he be? We've heard reports that there may be a deadly virus on board the spacecraft. I haven't heard that. Would you get out of my way, please? Would you get out of my way, please? If David were here now, what would you say to me? I have no further comment. You see, our first-hand knowledge of the Martian surface is almost nil. And because we were out of contact with the returning space lab for so many weeks, we haven't yet had a chance to get a full rundown on the discoveries that may have been made. In other words, you're suggesting that the Martian surface could be highly radioactive, in which case all members of the space lab team may have been affected. No, I'm suggesting nothing. I'm merely proposing a possible hypothesis to explain the Russian woman's untimely death. But the possibility remains that the Martian surface is radioactive or that the crew has been exposed to some kind of virus that might thrive in the Martian atmosphere or in outer space. Well, every possibility exists, Tom, but it could be dangerous to jump to conclusions before... Who is it? Irene, it's Eleanor Sterling. Oh, come on in. Oh, I see we finally got rid of the press. I heard about it coming in from the airport. Oh, my God, Irene, that's awful. We don't know enough. We don't have any information. But how did Olga die? They're saying terrible things on the radio. Diseases and radioactivity. They don't know what they're talking about. Come on, sit down. I had to leave the kids at home in Toronto with my mother. Oh, I mean, if anything happens to Guy, I just don't know what I'll do. Guy? Guy? What's the matter? Nothing. Oh, something's wrong. Look, I'm tired. In the excitement, I forgot to take my insulin shot. You're upset about Olga. Well, for Christ's sake, Dominica, she is dead. You could at least pretend some sympathy. I'm sorry. You know how I felt about her. I didn't hide it. You sure as hell didn't. What does that mean? I don't know. But you did seem to get an excessive amount of pleasure out of cutting her off from me. You didn't seem to object. If I recall, you were more than willing to replace her. I just don't like the feeling of being anyone's trophy. Yours or hers. Poor guy. This once, don't punish yourself. You didn't use her. She used you. Now listen, damn it. Guy? <laughs> Sir, I just gotta go take my shot. You will stop this immediately. We have orders from Mission Control. I do not take orders from them. And you will not desecrate this woman's body. No disrespect is intended. But this examination must be conducted. If you have a problem, I suggest you take it up with Captain Braddock. I am no longer interested in taking matters up with Captain Braddock. I warn you both. Leave her alone. Bloody asshole. You'd think you had something to hide. What way can I help you? Please, we're trying to work. Kurt, you were useful climbing in and out of Martian craters. But right now you're not needed. Understand? <laughs> I do believe he is actually trying to intimidate me. Major Steiner, get off the deck. You are offended, comrade. And are we to be in a constant state of mourning until we land? You will show Olga Denerenka respect. Of course, Colonel. My apologies. How has her death affected your morale? I feel a deep sense of loss, which I know is shared by the others. Speaking for myself, I can say only that Olga Denarenko was a great scientist and a great humanitarian. I shall miss her very much. How is the rest of the crew taking it? 
Andrew, I'm sorry to take you from the press conference. Commissar Denarenko has been informed of his wife's passing. Naturally, he is heartsick. Please convey our sympathies to the okay. Commissar. My friend, may we speak frankly? My government is fearful that an international incident is quite possible here. They request that there be complete cooperation between us. Naturally, I assured them that I would be made privy to everything that transpires aboard the space lab. There is something I should know? Yeah, there is. Andy. Olga Denarenko was murdered. Murdered? Doctor, do you know what you're saying? Believe me, it gives me no great pleasure. But how? Who? I don't know who. As for how, talk to Dr. Lee. We were fairly certain the cause of death was asphyxiation. Asphyxiation? It's quite a change from a brain hemorrhage. We asked Dr. Burdue to examine the body, and with the help of Miss Cooper, he discovered two things. First, faint traces of abrasion around the nose and mouth, and second, there were three minute white fibers found in her respiratory passages. It appears the killer sedated her, then used something to block her breathing passages, a pillow, a towel, a glove. We can't tell yet. The material seems animal-based, maybe wool. It was meant to look like a natural death. By God, it almost did. I see. I shall have to report this to my government. And in a matter of hours, the whole world will know. I regret any embarrassment that this may bring to your American commander. We're not the only ones going to be embarrassed here, Ali. See, at the time of her death, Olga Denarenko was two months pregnant. Well, once that little bit of news filters out to the world, I'm sure Commissar Denarenko will want to thank you personally for instigating his public humiliation. You're right, of course. This entire matter must be kept confidential. How may I help? We drove six miles so you could have a bowl of chili? No. We need to have a private conversation, Mitch, and so I can eat something edible. Anybody that calls that edible is in serious trouble. So talk. We got a killer aboard that spacecraft. We got to identify him before they touch down at Edwards. Be simpler to interrogate once they're in quarantine. Murder's a capital crime, Mitch. This one happened in outer space. Now, you're a lawyer, so you tell me. Who has jurisdiction in this case? Maybe nobody. Space law is in its infancy. Exactly. Got to know who we're talking about before any of us can make a move. Olga's lover. Maybe. She pick one of these guys up during training or on the flight. In other words, we need a history. And I don't mean the kind we already got in the file. I'm talking about a complete history, Mitch. OK, we've got our own people in Moscow. I'll get started on it tonight. Question, how do we find out what's going on in the space lab? Braddock, I've told him almost everything. Andy, I know he's your friend, but there's nothing that says he can't be our guy. Yeah, I know. So, my friend, what brings us together at this grotesque hour of the morning? I presume you weren't followed. Not with you, I'm sure. Shall we get to the point? We need to know if there was ever a personal relationship between Andrei Kelsenov and Olga Benarenko. What you are asking is highly dangerous. Colonel Kelsenov is a hero to our people. And only last year, he was highly suspect by the KGB. But as our most highly qualified cosmonaut, they could hardly keep him from the project. Even so, they were afraid he might defect. I understand certain precautions were taken to neutralize him had he betrayed his country. What sort of uh, precautions? KGB is very resourceful. And yet today, Kelsenov is a hero. And Olga Denarenko is a martyr. I will do what I can.
thought I'd locked it. Really? That's a big secret. Not really trying to identify some Martian plague, are you? Please, Guy, I really am busy. Well, take a break. Braddock wants everyone on the command deck. I realize there's still the possibility of error, at least until we can perform a physical autopsy on Earth. But as of the moment, I have to operate on the theory that Olga was murdered. Murdered? That's insane. I wish it were. How? She was suffocated. How long have you known this? Only a few hours. Now, eight of us remain aboard the laboratory. Eight and only eight. Do I have to spell out the situation to you? I'll be in my cabin for the next hour. Anyone who has anything at all to say, please speak up. Oh, and if the person responsible would like to explain why, I'll listen to that too. ideal situation considering the teamwork we will need to get down safely all I know is that it isn't you and you know it isn't me agreed well perhaps neither of us should answer that me as a likely suspect in Olga's death. Thought crossed my mind, particularly since you had such a strong reaction to the attempts to examine Olga's body. Not because I had any idea that murder was involved. Andre, Mission Control knows that Olga was pregnant. I wasn't responsible. No? Then who? She uh, wouldn't tell me. Look, you and I have had our disagreements, but believe me in this. I didn't get her pregnant, and I didn't kill her. It's true that she confided in me. She was terrified. That's why you two have been so secretive the last two weeks. Yes. She wanted me to arrange a discreet abortion as soon as we returned to Earth. For you Americans, it is easily obtained. Not so in the Soviet Union, particularly if you're the wife of an important party official. If you'd helped her, you would have been taking a major risk. She didn't leave me much choice. She said if I didn't cooperate, she would name me as the father. As you perhaps know, Commissar Denerenko is a violent and jealous man. If he had learned the truth, he would have had both of us killed. Christ. Are you out of your mind? Someone might have seen you. No one saw me. Kurt, we agreed. I told you no one saw me. You're frightened. You're always so fearful. Damn it, Kurt. I have a right to be. No one suspects. I'm always careful. Nothing has changed. Everything's changed. One of us on this ship killed Olga. That means we'll all be put under the microscope. He'll come out. Not unless we let it. The death was unfortunate. But do not ask me to feel pity. She married an old fool in the Kremlin to advance herself and then slept around with every man she could find. Believe me, I know. And do not tell me she did not come on to you. No. Then I didn't flirt with her the way you did. Well, but that is part of my masquerade. David, you must trust me. I have no intention of sharing our relationship with the world. I would hardly do personally or professionally to have my private life exposed if it remains secret by whatever means necessary. The expedition, led by Kurt Steiner, reached the summit shortly before 1 a.m. These films were taken by fellow climber Franz Dietrich. It was a record-breaking climb for the eight-man party, 
A record that was not no, I don't want that released yet. Years. Braddock's working. Oh, and in case that scarf looks familiar, yes, it's the same one he wore conquering the Matterhorn. Knitted by his mother, who died soon afterwards, he considered it a No, there's charm. nothing on Pamela his Cooper yet. We haven't heard from London. More than luck that won Major Steiner's success, but who knows? Look, I'll keep you informed. Always considered one of the most eligible bachelors on the European ski circuit. Steiner's good bastard, isn't he? Stab at the Winter Olympics well. in Zurich. Maybe he has a right to be. Dinah. Yes, sir. Are you still trying to get through to my wife? Yes, sir, but the circuits are overloaded. Well, keep trying, will you, honey? I'm getting to feel like a grandfather. Yes, sir. Frankly, you don't seem the least bit grandfatherly to me. Oh, so now you're listening in on my private phone conversations. Private? We can hear you all the way down the hall. Believe it or not, I am not cut out to be a detective. You're one of only three people that know the facts. You have to keep it in the family. What do you got? A tidbit from one of your spooks in Rome. Rome? What? Something on Dominica Mistrelli? Uh-huh. Vis-a-vis she and Olga Denarenko. Oh, sorry. I happen to know for a fact that those two never met before the start of this mission. Two years ago, Dominica was having an affair with an Italian professor. One week before he was to publish a breakthrough paper, the identical material appeared in a journal in Russia under Olga's byline. Now, maybe it was coincidence, maybe not. Either way, the professor went off the deep end. Seven months ago, he committed suicide. Dominic was with him when he died. Olga was already confirmed for the mission before Dominica applied. Right. And Dominica cashed in every marker she had to be sure her government endorsed her application. Captain, I can operate a microscope, but I'm no expert. I think I've got that fiber now down to an animal base, but I can't be more specific. Okay, forget about the fiber for a moment. What I want to talk to you about is Olga. I need a woman's insight into her character, who she was, what she was. We weren't all that close. You were closer than Dominica. Yes. There was a coolness between them. It's funny, I remember one night in training, Dominica got a bit drunk. She said the strangest thing to me. She said there was someone on the mission who had stolen her life. She said before the trip was over, she'd prove it. I didn't ask you about Dominica. But I think she was referring to Olga. It's merely a guess. Did Olga ever hint at who might have got her pregnant? No, but... No, what? Well, I could make a guess. Go ahead. Well, she'd have picked someone safe. Certainly not Andre. Ultimately, he'd have been more loyal to Mother Russia than to her. Kurt Stana, Braggart and a talk are much too risky. You can eliminate Dr. Bardo as well. Because of his age? Because he is not the sort of man to become involved with someone like her. He has been happily and faithfully married for the past 29 years. So that leaves David and Guy Sterling. And of course, you, Captain. I'm flattered. For several reasons, I'd say it was Guy. Married or not, he likes the ladies. For the first three weeks of training, he tried to move in on me. He went so far as to tell me he'd had a vasectomy. You're kidding. Not at all. I wonder if you used that line on Olga. Yeah, it's possible. Thank you, Pamela. You've been very helpful. Sir, this TV press conference later on. Must we? I mean, it seems so grotesque pretending to the world that everything's all right. We know bloody well one of us is a killer. It's necessary. We're under orders to pacify the media. Send her in, Dinah. Dr. McAllister. Ah, uh, Mrs. Tremaine. Oh, please, don't stand. I, uh, I hate to bother you, but I, uh... Please, have a seat. Yes, I will, thank you. I thought you'd be getting ready for the television cameras. Well, I, I still have a few minutes, so... Can I get you a cup of coffee? Uh, no, thank you. I, uh... I spent a, a few hours being uh, interviewed by a man named Carlino. His questions were uh, very personal. They, uh, he, was, he was asking about my marriage and uh, my sex life. 
I felt rather humiliated. I'm sorry. He was hinting that David may have had something to do with Olga Denarenko's death, uh, some, some kind of love affair. Or... I don't know anything about that. Uh, David has sent me this letter just a few hours before the spacecraft lifted off from Mars. You will see that the idea that, uh, that David and this Russian woman may have uh, had something sexual, well, it, it does seem a little absurd. For the past year, David and I have not slept together for the mere reason that he just wasn't interested. I, I blamed myself, but then I, uh, I received this. I suppose it's his way of making me feel less guilty. He, he does say near the, uh, near the end that he would like a divorce. Something quiet and discreet to avoid being an embarrassment to either of us. Sorry. Well, these things happen, don't they, Doctor? Usually, however, to someone else. Doesn't identify a new friend here. No, it, uh, it could be someone aboard the, uh, the spacecraft. The, the problems did seem to begin when he was in training. Doctor, I've shown you this letter for one reason. I'm still his wife, and I do intend to fight for him. I hope I've done the right thing. Thank you. Isn't it funny? In a few minutes, David and I will have to pretend to be the all-American couple in front of millions of people. I'm not sure I can pull it off. Well, to tell you the truth, I've been thinking about turkey dinner, cranberry sauce. Well, I'm sure I could arrange that. Of course, Mom will want to make the pumpkin pie. Right, that's great. Say hi to her for me when you're talking to her. And, and she can't wait to see you. Neither can the rest of the family. And I miss them all, too. David, excuse me, do you think you've lost any weight? Well, I would say so. There's not much to snack on up here, even if you wanted to. Irene, I thought maybe we'd take a couple of weeks. Um, go to Vermont. You know that cabin by the lake, the one with the leaky boat? And the leaky bathtub? And the leaky sink? And the leaky roof. Right. It'd be nice to spend some time together. You know, just... Dr. Bordeaux, I need 10 cc's adrenaline. Can you hear me? Can you tell us what's happened? Cut this transmission. All right, do it. Do it now. What's happening up there? Captain Braddock? You're going to have to leave now, Mr. Kilbride. What is it? Well, I'm not sure. I think perhaps poison, Captain. WREQ News presents the 6 o'clock report. Now live from Aerospace Headquarters is correspondent Jeffrey Kilbride. A veil of secrecy now shrouds mission control. For nearly six hours, there has been no news of Guy Sterling, the Canadian meteorologist who collapsed suddenly on Space Lab's command deck, a collapse witnessed briefly by hundreds of millions of shocked viewers. Is Sterling alive or dead? No one will say. And if he is ill or disabled, is there any connection to the death of Olga Denarenko two days ago? Suddenly, what seemed like a fantasy from a science fiction movie has become a stark and ugly possibility. That somehow the crew of the Conestoga is being attacked by a deadly virus from outer space. 
Cyanide. Are you sure? Produce convinced Pam Cooper backs him up. It was in the insulin. As soon as Guy injected himself, he never had a chance. Who could have gotten to his insulin supply, Captain? Any of us. Look, Andy, my people know what's going on. Believe me, they're damn scared. I want them down now. We're not prepared for that. Well, get prepared. We have a lunatic loose up here. Kelsau's running a pre-check on the Delta 216 right now. No, you can't risk a premature separation. You don't have enough fuel. Whatever the risk, it's less than staying up here. We'll do what we can. Soon. Out. Dr. McAllister, I've got that information on the chlorocyanocalumite. File confirms it is highly toxic and causes almost instant death. Gel capsules, the type used by the Russians, come in various sizes depending on the body weight of the subject. The most typical dosage used by the foreign agents is 5 cc's, which will kill a man of average weight and size within 10 seconds. Then there's no doubt the man was poisoned. No, sir. No doubt. Computers indicate one of the vials had been tampered with and it did contain a lethal dose of CCA. That's a cyanide compound usually used by intelligence officers in the event of their capture. Like a suicide capsule. The Russians issue those things to uh, select military people as a matter of course. Andy, we've got to bring him down. Yes, sir, that's Captain Braddock's intention. Good. Impress upon him the need for caution. He's to maintain the tightest security possible. I want the rest of those people back alive. Yes, sir. That poison is a favorite of the Russians. Both Andrei Kalsinov and Olga Denarenko were issued this stuff. As a matter of course, to be used in the event of the attack from the Martians. Christ, I'm not even thinking straight. You're thinking better than you look. That must have been the eight-minute nap I took. By the way, have you been able to find out who David's uh, boyfriend is? It's got to be Kurt Steiner. Though, come to think of it, I never suspected him of being a homosexual. I don't think any of us did. Anyway, I don't see how it has any bearing. Well, I don't know whether it has either, but I'm, you know, I'm grasping. Look, the important thing is the safety of your crew, even if it means letting the killer go. That's not possible. Don't be too sure. Suppose we find out who it is. Who's going to prosecute him? Who has jurisdiction? Hell, the minute you touch down, the killer may be home free. That's obscene. I know, but I don't know what to do about it. You are absolutely sure of this? Yes, sir. The cause of her death has been confirmed without question. My dear? Yes, sir. There is more, isn't there? We are not sure, sir. Now tell me. There is a report. There is a speculation. Sir, the Americans believe your wife was two months pregnant at the time of her death. Naturally, the idea is preposterous. Certainly the autopsy will disprove such an insulting suggestion. Now, even in death, she has dishonored me. The Delta 216 is scheduled to land in less than 10 hours. Yes, sir. Is it possible to contact Colonel Kalsinov without the knowledge of the others? Perhaps, sir. It would have to go through Alexander Rostov. Do it. Have Rostov make it clear to Colonel Kalsinov that I wish the Delta 216 diverted to a landing site within the Soviet Union. Sir, that is impossible. Make it possible. Do whatever you have to, but under no circumstances, my wife's body will be defiled by the Americans. Yes, sir. Control, I'd like confirmation on horizontal latitude reading. 5896.34. Uh, that's a Roger, David. Uh, will you activate your Z-valve readouts? We may have a problem with compression in the forward jets. With luck and uh, enough fuel, it'll be home time for breakfast. I hope so. Well, Mitch, eight hours to go. Count them. Andy, before you activate that thing, you better have a look at this. It's the secret Soviet file on Olga Denarenko. How'd you get this? Doesn't matter. Fifteen years ago, Olga was 19 and living in London. 
Her father was a minor bureaucrat in the Soviet's London embassy. About a dozen students from Oxford were invited to an embassy reception. One of those students was an American Rhodes Scholar named Neil Braddock. She and Braddock began seeing one another, tried to keep their meetings a uh, secret, but the uh, KGB was on her ass from day one. Apparently it had nothing to do with politics, just sex. Anyway, her father was reassigned to Moscow and Olga went back with him. Braddock went back to the US and as far as the Russians are aware, they didn't see each other again until the start of the Conestoga space mission. really great, Mitch. You and your CIA boys, you do a backgrounder on her and Captain Braddock and you come up with a silch and look at this. She was a young girl. Her name was different. He wasn't attached to the military yet. Slipped through the cracks. And Captain Braddock never did say he used to know her. I wonder why. Where's Steiner? Anyone seen him? Not for a while. Dominica. Let's see if he's in his cabin. Yes, sir. Get him here on the double. Changed his mind. Let me see. See with what, Doctor? You're half blind. We all know it. Here. He's turning cold already. He's dead, Doctor. <sighs> Even you can figure that out. All right, that's enough. Everyone, go to your cabin. Lock yourselves in until it's time to board the Delta 216. Well, I'm still giving the orders here, Kalsanov. Yes, and we've all seen the results of those orders. Three people dead already. Are you hoping for a fourth? We'll all be safer if we gather our personal belongings and wait together on the command deck until we depart. That way, we'll all be able to keep each other in sight. I disagree. Disagree all you like, Colonel, but it's an order. I'll get my things, Captain. David. Now, will you please repeat to me the Commissar's exact words. Let's see. Well, there is a way. It will be difficult, but I will try. How long has he been dead? Reduces about an hour. Can you reconstruct everybody's whereabouts at the time he was killed? What for? I know who killed him. It was Kelsenoff. Look, Andy, Steiner was a big man, very strong. The women couldn't have done it in Berdu's infirm. And as for David, I was able to confirm his relationship with Steiner. Could have had a fallen out. And there's still you, Captain. Who said that? Mitch? Captain, I've got a few questions I'd like to ask. Are you saying I killed Steiner? I'm not suggesting anything yet. I would like to know about you and Olga Denarenko. I don't understand the question. Come on, Captain. Fifteen years ago, London, a party at the Soviet Embassy. Now, do you understand the question? If you've got a point to make, make it. I'm sorry, Donnie. You'll have to hold everything. We can't be disturbed just now. I'm sorry, sir, but the Vice President and Mr. Rostov are here. They must see you immediately. Uh -huh. Send him in. Drop it, Mitch. Andy, I'm sorry to break in at this hour, but we've got a problem. 
I guess you better be part of it too, Mr. Carlino. Mr. Rostov wants to speak directly to Colonel Kalsinov. I've agreed. Captain Braddock? Yes, sir. Would you summon the Colonel to your cabin, please? Yes, sir. Colonel Kalsinov to the captain's cabin. Mr. Vice President, I'm sorry, sir. Right now we have another problem. Oh? By problem, you mean another death? Kurt Steiner was found strangled in his quarters less than 30 minutes ago. My God, Andy, you've got to get those people down. Mr. Vice President, Colonel Kalsinov. Colonel, I'm here with Mr. Rostov. He wishes to speak to you. In private, sir. Oh, no. Mr. Vice President, I must protest. Protest all you like, Mr. Rostov, but considering what's going on up there, whatever you've got to say, we're all going to hear. As you wish. Colonel, we are obviously all concerned about this dangerous situation. Moscow has ordered me to ask you directly if you are satisfied with the leadership of Captain Braddock. The captain and I have disagreed often, but it would be unfair to hold him responsible for what's happening at the moment. Do you feel that you should assume command of the remainder of this mission? At this time, the Captain Braddock has the confidence of the others. That is not an answer, Colonel. It's the best I can give you, sir. Very well. I'm satisfied. Best wishes for a safe re-entry. Oh, and Colonel, Premier Savarnich sends warmest personal regards. I am uh, grateful to the Premier. I realize that my request is uh, somewhat unusual, but uh, what Moscow proposes, well, we all have our orders. Talk to you later, Andy. Yes, sir. What the hell was all that about? Why would Rostov bring greetings from a deposed premier? It doesn't make sense. Unless... just gave Colonel Kalsinov some kind of prearranged secret order, possibly to try and take over this mission. Neil! My God, Neil! Damage, sir. Quadrant B3. We're losing oxygen, electric. I can't maintain stabilization. What happened? I'm not sure. Kelsenow's dead. Someone blew up his cabin. No, there's nothing left. I sealed off the corridor. There was nothing we could do. Doctor, I asked you. What happened? Leave alone, he can't see. I was trying to get into my cabin. Suddenly, there was an explosion. I was knocked to the ground. Captain, we are off trajectory. David says we're going to hit the atmosphere dead on, and he cannot correct our course. Well, we're Get a picture, it's down on that thing right now. Sorry, sir, we've lost it. Well, keep trying. Doctor, they've got a massive malfunction. They're off trajectory. Let's go, David, into the Delta. Captain, what about the body? Not enough time. I said move it, David! Getting any power, the electrical system shorted out. We're not gonna make stay here. I'm gonna have to blow it. 
It must be going for the Delta. Can you establish contact? No, sir. The Delta system won't receive until we've entered Earth's atmosphere. Look on your alternate frequencies and start sending. Yes, sir. Here we go, back in the corner. What's the time on this? We've got three seconds. on this thing to make it from here I'm sure as hell gonna find out power activated jack turbo's activated jack separation separation confirmed ignition Got a blip coming off the space lab. I think they've launched the Delta. So put the grid up on the screen. Yes, sir. Margo, give me a calculation. Yes, sir. It's no good, Doctor. They're way off. Are they correct? It's possible. But they're running out of time. We're coming in shallow. We're gonna bounce off. Those are four six percent. We don't have enough for a second pass. Correcting forward attitude to six, zero, eight, nine. Now. The red line is the Delta's course, sir. Uh, if the green line is the correct trajectory for re-entry, if they can put the two together, they'll make it back. 29 seconds to atmosphere. 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, Coming up to 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Mark. What happened? They've lost radar contact in the ionization belt. Did they make it? We'll know in a minute. Delta, this is control, please acknowledge. Delta, this is control. Do you read? Delta, this is control. Do you read? Delta, this is control. Do you read? Mission control, this is Delta. Only five of us, but we're coming home. Andy, you've got a mess in your hands, but at least they're coming in safe. Five of them, sir. Mitch, I want a plane ready to fly to Edwards in 30 minutes. Triple security. Nobody in or out. What is it, Andy? You know something, don't you? No, sir. Just guessing. Want to share your thoughts? Not yet, sir. Not just yet. I'm Colonel Jenner. We've been ordered to give you every cooperation. Where are they, Carl? It's a question in our main briefing room. It's just this way. Sir, the medical staff is concerned. May I suggest that they not be questioned until they've undergone a thorough physical examination? No, you may not. surgery immediately. Doctor? Dr. McAllister? Yeah. How do you feel? Pain is minimal. I suspect pressure on the optic nerve. Dr. McAllister, I'm sure you have questions, but couldn't they wait? Dr. Bordeaux should be examined immediately. We all need a chance to catch our bearings. Of course. I've already made arrangements for four of you to undergo medical debriefing. Four of us? What the hell is that supposed to mean? It 
means, David, that one of you is a murderer. No jurisdiction on this base, you're a civilian. I do in this case, Neil. I'm here under direct orders from the highest level. Colonel, would you excuse us, please? If you need me, I'll be outside. Thanks. This is a hell of a greeting. But Andy, considering where I've been. I'm fresh out of brass bands. Brass bands. I expected just a little more than this. Oh, did you? I never murdered anybody. Well, maybe you've got another name for it. Oh, what is this, a kangaroo court? No. It's just a quiet conversation between Two old friends. Yeah, we're friends. I'm thinking about the things you didn't tell me. For example, you never mentioned you used to know Olga Denarenko. Now all of a sudden she turns up, pregnant and dead. You think I did it? Did you? No. Well, I'm listening. Look, Andy, I think I've got a pretty good idea what happened up there. Survival has a tendency to clear the mind. Now, you're dancing around a murder charge. Court martial at best. I can't make you any deals. All right. It's no secret that Olga's marriage was unhappy. Sex was never part of the package with the commissar. She went looking in other places for gratification. She went after me and I wasn't interested. You never had much of a sense of irony, Neil. But it should occur even to you that you are the last person I would help. Particularly since you ignored me when I needed you. Damn it, Olga, you're married. A fact that doesn't seem to have discouraged the others. But there was a fellow on that ship who was interested. Guy Sterling. For several reasons, I'd say it was Guy. Married or not, he likes the ladies. For the first three weeks of training, he tried to move in on me. He even went so far as to tell me he'd had a vasectomy. So Guy did have a relationship with Olga? Yes. I confirmed that through Dominica. Halfway through the mission, for reasons of her own, she took great delight in taking oh, no. Guy away from Olga. But you did seem to get an excessive amount of pleasure out of cutting her off from me. You didn't seem to object. If I recall, you were more than willing to replace her. As far as Olga was concerned, Guy was interested and available. They had their affair and... She got pregnant. Exactly. Then he killed her. He didn't have to. Olga could never go public about her pregnancy. Her husband would have had her killed. Guy was perfectly safe. He knew eventually she'd have to have an abortion. She didn't leave me much choice. She said if I didn't cooperate, she would name me as the father. As you perhaps know, Commissar Denerenko is a violent and jealous man. If he had learned the truth, he would have had both of us killed. Somebody killed her? Yes. The man I had the most to hide. Kurt Steiner. After Guy left Olga for Dominica, Olga was very insecure, and Steiner had been flirting with all the women to cover up the fact that he was gay. Sad in a way. Now that we are almost home, I will no longer have you to look at each morning. I doubt that will be a significant tragedy in your life, Major. She married an old fool in the Kremlin to advance herself, and then slept around for every man she could find. Believe me, I know. And do not tell me she did not come on to you. No. Then I didn't flirt with her the way you did. Well, but that is part of my masquerade. So you assumed she went from Guy to Kurt. He told me what he told David, his lover. He would never allow himself to be found out when he couldn't or wouldn't perform in bed with Olga. She threatened to tell all. It would hardly do personally or professionally to have my private life exposed. It would remain secret by whatever means necessary. And Olga was suffocated. And the white fibers Pamela found were animal-based. It appears the killer sedated her, then used something to block her breathing passages. A pillow, a towel, a glove. We can't tell yet. The material seems animal-based. Maybe wool. No, I don't want Steiner's that. lucky scarf, of course. And in case that scarf looks familiar, yes, it's the same one he wore conquering the Matterhorn. His lucky scarf. He was going to leave that scarf on Mars, but he brought it back with him to the ship. He confessed to you. Why? he was an arrogant bastard and he knew there was nothing I could do. You confirmed that. Look, the important thing is the safety of your crew, even if it means letting the killer go. That's not possible. 
Don't be too sure. Suppose we find out who it is. Who's going to prosecute him? Who has jurisdiction? Hell, the minute you touch down, the killer may be home free. That's obscene. I know. But I don't know what to do about it. I thought about it, and the more I thought about it, the more I realized that his government, not to mention the complications of space law, would protect him. Couldn't let that happen. So you murdered him? No. I'll tell you exactly what I told Kalsanoff. As long as we're aboard this ship, I'm judge, jury, and executioner. I'll consider any attempt to subvert this mission an act of mutiny. Do I make myself clear? It wasn't murder. I weighed the situation, I judged him, and I executed him. It was either that or he goes free. I had no choice. So, Steiner kills Olga. You execute Steiner. Solves the mystery. Wait, who killed Guy Sterling? Well, it's easy. Olga Denarenko. Olga was already dead. Oh, I know. Sterling died because somebody put cyanide in one of his insulin vials. Now, Olga Denarenko could have done that any time. Two weeks before. He had to be silenced. See, there were only two people that knew about her pregnancy. Colonel Kalsanoff and Sterling. The Russian poison. Kalsanov could have killed him. No. The guy didn't die instantly, which he would have done if he'd have been given a full male dose from Kalsanov's supply. David, you're obviously due for a vacation after Have you made any plans? Irene, I thought maybe we'd take a couple of weeks. Um, go to Vermont. You know that The reason he was able to leave his cabin and stagger to the command deck is because Olga fixed his insulin with her smaller dosage. It'd be nice to spend some time together, you know, just... Remember what Margaret Lee told me. I've got that information on the Carl Sandicalumite. File confirms it is highly toxic and causes almost instant death. Gel capsules, the type used by the Russians, come in various sizes depending on the body weight of the subject. The most typical dosage used by the foreign agents is five cc's, which will kill a man of average weight and size within 10 seconds. Sterling may not have said anything, but uh, Olga couldn't take that chance. He'd already lied to her once about his vasectomy. Which brings us to the death of Andrei Kalsanov. I mean, who would throw a bomb into his cabin? More to the point, why? Kalsanov's dead. Someone blew up his cabin. He makes no, alive. there's nothing left. I sealed off the corridor. There was nothing we could do. Mitch thinks the bomb was already in the cabin that Kalsanov himself brought it aboard, probably unknowingly. The old Russian regime, I mean before Denarenko and his crowd took power, distrusted Colonel Kalsanov. They thought perhaps he might defect. Well, he was a national hero, a public figure. They couldn't do much, but they did hedge their bets. They needed a way to neutralize him in the event he did go sour or turn traitor. Even so, they were afraid he might defect. I understand certain precautions were taken to neutralize him had he betrayed his country. What well, sort of uh, precautions? The KGB is very resourceful. So they planted a bomb. Which Kalsanov could unknowingly set off, given the right set of circumstances. But Kalsanov wasn't going to defect. Ah. But now the Russians have another use for their bomb. Now think about this. Olga Denarenko is about to undergo an autopsy. The world is going to find out about her condition. Her husband, Commissar Denarenko, is going to be real embarrassed. He's the kind of man who'll do anything to keep the world from finding out about the condition of his dead wife. Herr Frostov, make it clear to Colonel Kalsinov that I wish the Delta 216 diverted to a landing site within the Soviet Union. Sir, that is impossible. Make it possible. Do whatever you have to. But under no circumstances, my wife's body will be defiled by the Americans. How could they control Kalsanov? Long distance, through Rostov. There is a way. It will be difficult, but I will try. See, Mitch thinks that Kalsanov was programmed to act when given a prearranged signal. Very well. I'm satisfied. Remember, it seemed odd to all of us that Rostov was sending greetings from the deposed Premier? Premier Savarnich sends warmest personal regards. The thing is, when Kalsanov was programmed, that premier was still in power. The signal, though outdated, had to remain the same. Without even realizing what he was doing, Kalsanov went back to his cabin. When he was there, he took some action. We'll probably never know what that was. 
It triggered the bomb blast. Neil! My God, Neil! So Kalasnov was actually killed by Alexander Rostov. He pulled the trigger. But then Renko gave the order. I think they're both equally guilty. And they're going to go free. Maybe so, but that's out of our hands. What about me? I got a hunch it'll wind up on the president's desk. He'll make the decision, Neil. I think the whole thing's going to be swept under the rug. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I'll let you know what I hear. Now you hang in there. Thanks. I'm not going anywhere. Grandparents yet? We're not. I see. Grace, I'm getting the plane. I'm getting out of here as fast as I can. I'll be there this evening. Of course, I'm listening to you. Yes, dear. All I know is when I'm there, the babies get born on time. I love you too. Bye.